Alright, so today um, our topic is going to be Russian tanks amidst the uh, conflict that has erupted over in Europe. It's pretty unfortunate. So, how about we get started with the history first. And we're not going to focus on World War II necessarily because I don't think there's too much interesting to talk about as of now with World War II tanks. So, we'll start as from the Cold War. So, from World War II, I'd say the shift from the way the tanks looked was pretty, um, like, how do I say it? It was pretty drastic. It was a really big change. Instead of the T-34 that they used, the tanks that they had, it was a completely different doctrine from what it seemed. And... So right now, um, since I don't have too many interesting Russian tanks on this game, for that I'm going to commentate over for y'all. I mean, I, can, I'm, I talk about this, but I don't want to bore y'all out with just like a black screen or something. But um, right now, I am playing uh, German tanks. And um, don't get me wrong, like Russian tanks are pretty cool and good and all, but I find uh, German tanks to be just superior over them. So, we're going to be spawning in right now, and I'll, I'll try to find a live representation for y'all. And I don't know why that telephone pole fell over. Anyways, so yeah, this is a Leopard. This is a German tank. This is not Russian at all. Two, uh, NATO and Russia, two completely different kinds of tanks. So, the change that the Russians made in their tanks was... Basically, they were... Uh, supposed to be lighter and they were significantly shorter but they had a lot of firepower and they were pretty agile for how cheap everything was but along the road you would see like reliability issues maybe like the engine was too complex too expensive the transmission was too expensive anything like that and over time, this shaped what the Russians wanted into what they would call a perfect tank for them. Coming up right now is a Russian tank. That is a T-80 BVM, and that is actually a pretty recent tank in real life that they have. Uh, the Russians have come up with, like 2000s or something. But Russian tanks, also, they are not... As you can see, my tank looks way bigger than the guy's tank over there. And that is because Russia, they want, like, shorter tanks, and these tanks are meant for, like, tank combat. Like, they're meant to kill other tanks, of course. And NATO tanks, they kind of, like, infantry support, kind of, and they'll definitely be able to fend off any armored foes. And as of now, I'm approaching the conflict. There's my teammate right there. I don't know what he's doing. There's going to be a tank up here, and that's not a Russian tank, that's an American tank. We don't care about that. We don't care about that. Got his cannon barrel, but who cares? So, basically, the Russians, their tanks are on it. Obviously, they're smaller, so that means they're going to be lighter. But, their tanks are smaller and lighter, but they also kind of have equivalent armor protection. So, they are, in their own way, really good. As in, they have the jack-of-all-trades. And there is actually one thing that plagues all Russian tanks. Gun depression. For people who may not know, gun depression is how far the gun can look down. And so whenever the Russians, they wanted to make their tanks small. What this does is that the turret, along with the hole, has to be smaller, shorter. Oh, deflected a shot there. Anyways, so basically... What are you doing? So yeah, as you can see, um, that right there, that is explosive reactive armor. That is what the Russians use a lot on their modern day tanks. And let me just dumb it down for y'all. So, explosive reactive armor, it, it decides that it wants to, um, whenever a round comes in contact with it, it uses an explosive force to push the round away. And... It's kind of like a disposable um, lifesaver, really. See? Kind of looks like cardboard on some of them. 
And if you ever do look back at that tank, it looks very, like, equipped. A lot of equipment on it. That's very common on Russian tanks. So, as I was saying, because the Russians, they wanted to make their tanks small, but at the cost, they wouldn't... Russian tanks will not be able to... Pro what the... Okay, anyways. Russian tanks, they do not do good in hilly terrain because their guns are limited by how small the turret is. They cannot look as far down as, for say, my tank. Eight, I have eight degrees of gun depression, and I may have forgotten the numbers, but, um, let me see. Russian tanks may have, like, at most four degrees to five degrees of gun depression, and that is not good at all. Another thing about Russian tanks, they're on uh, modern day Russian tanks, um, their turrets are really armored, are well armored. Because their turrets, it's like there is a huge block of combined, of a bunch of metals combined together. We call this composite armor. They have a lot of that on the turret. Got him. And so basically, like, if you really, like, were shooting... I got killed by a Russian tank. If you were shooting at a Russian tank, like, on the turret right there, you wouldn't be able to get through it, really, because that's a lot of steel. They have many layers of protection. And I am currently respawning back in another tank. Um, and, you know, Russia kind of does the same thing that literally any, any kind of nation does, and they always... They have one variant of a tank, and then they build upon that. Like, I have two Leopards. Two Leopard 2s. There's an A4, A5, and an A6. The higher the number, most of the time, that means that it's an upgraded version. And Russia does this a lot. Like, I could not even explain to y'all how many sub-variants of Russian tanks um, exist. Say for one tank i'd say about for every tank there would be at very least three sub um variants um uh, that's an american tank right there as you can tell i'm fighting americans as a german but this game i mean it's just a video game let's not care about that so yeah um it's cheaper for russia to just build on that and then the tanks act Russian tanks last a very very long time I'm pretty sure some countries out there are still using 1950s 60s Russian tanks they last a while and once they're once they're like Toyotas once they're made reliable they'll last don't know what this guy's doing deflected and you'll y'all hear me say well dash you said that their armor is pretty good why are you just smacking them like flies Russian tanks do have, I'd say, like, three common... No, not three. I'm sorry. Two common weak spots. One weak spot would have to be, um, To think of it as where the driver can see out the front of the vehicle. There is no armor there. If there was armor there, the driver wouldn't be able to see. Oh, uh, I could have just died there. Where's the idiot that shot that? I see you. And so basically, I deploy smoke. Um, oh no. As y'all just saw, I just got um, the whole US arsenal of bombs dropped on me. But that's about $500,000 right there. I'm spawning in a plane right now. So just kind of ignore what I'm doing as a plane. Because that's, I don't know how to fly. So just how about we don't focus on that? Anyways, so Russian tanks, um, ever since the T-64, I believe, T-64 to T-72, uh, they all had, they both had one, co two common weak spots. One, the lower glacy. One, you can't armor the lower glacy, really. It just overcomplicates the process of making it, and it's just kind of pointless. So it's kind of like, it's a knife that's going to forever be in your foot. And also, the driver's poor. Again, where the driver has to see, you can't put armor there or else your driver is going to be blind. Nowadays, they use cameras, but that overcomplicates the process and 
now I mean realistically I don't think any gunner like in a war would have the time to aim for the driver and so they don't really worry about that but yeah Russian tanks they are just their armor is actually really good but there are very big weak spots and whenever on some Russian tanks they fix this but whenever the lower glacy which is there's the front armor that's on top and then there's the lower which slides under whenever that gets hit the shell is gonna go through one it's gonna hit the driver and two is gonna detonate the ammunition and for someone who may lack common sense in my field of research so to say an ammo explosion almost all the time means instant catastrophic death and no there will be no recovery of the vehicle that has been said to be ammo racked because the whole ammo in the all the ammo in the tank oh I'm getting locked on all the ammo in the tank has exploded inside killing everyone and everything and that's just total destruction and I mean when it realistically tanks tankers they aim for center mass but say most of the time if it does go through on Russian tanks because another issue is that the, the crew is really tight together the gunner and the commander sit super close and then the driver sits right in the middle of them whenever the driver gets hit most of the time shrapnel is gonna be thrown into the face of the gunner and the commander and that also kind of means death and instant knockout of the vehicle and Russian tanks they aren't just limited to Russia because every let's say take for example Ukraine they have their own set of Russian tanks that they have turned into their own made their own variants and all that but what makes a Russian tank you can never you can take the tank out of Russia, but you will never take the rush out of the tank. Because they all share one thing in common. Size, looks, and their doctrine. So, and let's, before we summarize, let's compare. NATO tanks, they are usually heavier, more expensive. Usually, I would say, um, one-on-one, -on -one, they would probably win one on one there's way too many variables but flat open desert with a few sand dunes I'm sure NATO tank would win depending but they're also more expensive harder to produce and also you have to train extra crew members Russians their tanks are smaller cheaper easy to produce easy to work on and also they have three crew members and they have three crew members because of an autoloader and it, the name is pretty self-explanatory they do not use a loader and without the use of a loader Russia doesn't have to pay for they don't have to pay for the meal the clothing they don't have to pay for another crew tank crew member and ultimately leading to say better combat effectiveness please don't crash all right so, really, you can never say one tank is ever better in this world.